Hello, YouTube. <laughs> What's going on, guys? This is Chandler Smith, and I am extremely excited about today's video because Garrett, my best buddy, just purchased a fourplex. Now, what happened is I had him go over with my videographer, talk about the property, walk through the property, explain the returns, and in this video, I'm going to pick apart that video, and you're gonna get to see both the videos as we analyze this fourplex, look at the property, and I'm going to determine if I think it's a good investment. Garrett has to live with his purchase either way because he already bought it. And the reason I decided to do this video is Garrett has bought a lot of real estate and our criteria is slightly different. Now, there have been times where I have disagreed with purchases Garrett have made. And fortunately for him, all of those purchases have actually panned out in a big way. He's got incredible <laughs> returns on all of the investments he's made. And so I thought this would be a good video to again say if I would purchase the video or not, it's gonna help you see how I analyze a property and how Garrett analyzes properties because both of our analysis is, is, is I don't know, analyses. Analysis. Analyse. <laughs> Over the years have worked out great for us and our real estate portfolios. And so you guys can see both perspectives if you are looking into purchasing a fourplex. So with all of that being said, let's jump into it. I think people like the hello YouTube. You should try it out. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let's jump into it. We haven't seen this first yeah, take. Yeah, this is a first take. This is a response of both some, of us. Let me give some prep. No, we here just kind of watched well. the video. I was, I had a little bit of a headache. My wife had just made me shave my mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of an off day, so probably not quite up to like my normal. <laughs> All right, full send. Uh, oh, YouTube. Oh. And it was look at this snowy. <laughs> What's going on, guys? But I gotta have my own trademark. Uh, Chandler is back at home. Can we turn this up? He asked me to try and show you guys this fourplex that I am closing on on Monday. That was yesterday. This is units 26, 27, 28. No, no, no. Cut that. You're gonna really try one more time. Oh, this is this the whole time we were together. This is. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a lot of bloopers in here. Perfect. How I got it under contract. Uh, what will help you find off market properties and then kind of walk you through the numbers really quick and show you a really gross uh, video of a backed up toilet in this property. So with all that said, let's jump into it. <laughs> Still your line there. It was very cold. <laughs> okay, so this unit is vacant. It's the only unit that is vacant. It's a lot harder to make a video by, I've, I, <clears throat> I did a few back in the day for you by myself, but this one was kind of spur of the moment because I thought you were going to be there. <laughs> and then you ditched me. It's, it's, it's hard. It's difficult. you got right, to be able so to tell first, a story first on First critique. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I can think... Oh, those are clean units. Unit yeah, it's brand new. Yeah. Because the toilet backed up. Scaring the previous landlords and helping me to be able to buy this property. So they sold the property because uh, it flooded and they just didn't want anything to do with it. Yeah. Interesting. It's What's funny though is the toilet backed up, trashed the unit, and I think that had actually happened to them. I think they had just redone this unit, and then the toilet backed up, trashed the unit, got redone again, and then they sold me the property, which is funny because now the problem is fixed. You know what I mean? Interesting. But we'll take it. Right here is to blame. This guy. Well, I guess actually not this toilet because this is a new toilet. Um, <laughs> but the previous owner. You saw the video of the old toilet, right? I have not seen it. I yet. posted it on my Instagram in a story. It was right. disgusting. Is that going to be in here? No, it's not. Well, it's not in here. I'll have to send it. Urine and everything. I was trying to. It was going to get a little rewind right here. Is to blame. Grossing people out right here. Listen to the words I used. Well, I guess actually not this toilet because this is a new toilet. Um, but the previous owners had a major problem with the sewage line and it backed up and it shot poop and toilet paper and urine shot and poop. everything else that is disgusting keeping the video interesting <laughs> and it was terrible and there was water all over and just super super gross and i was fortunate or unfortunate enough to kind of see that before <laughs> they cleaned it up um and it was bad we'll show some videos um throughout this of it but it was really really gross uh but do you have the gross owners, video let's look at it right now we're gonna take a pause said, and we're gonna look at the gross video 
I actually posted it on my Instagram story. This reacting thing is really fun because With, uh, yeah, it is. it's not. It doesn't take a lot of mental energy to make a video for you guys. That's pretty engaging. Oh. I'm just gonna have you go film stuff every time, and I'll just respond. You just, uh, <laughs> just work out the nitty gritty details. You know? <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but Chandler actually promised me a pair of boots. You buy you and I matching cowboy boots. Okay, deal. <laughs> For laying on just this disgusting... Uh, Come on, let's watch the video. <laughs> oh. That's a lot of poop. Yeah, I wasn't kidding. It was disgusting. <laughs> so when did this... Was this from them or this was you? No, that's not... This is me. I took this you, video. So how did you, they did all that renovation? Yeah, in within the process. like three weeks or so. Wow. This is right when I went under contract on it. Were they just sick? They were just like. Oh yeah, they were, well, so Stop I. Stop zooming in on that. Yeah, oh. I picked it up from a property manager. He said that the current owners, he was like, they're a little bit older. You know, they own this property and that duplex that I just bought. So I actually picked up a duplex as well. He was like, they honestly just want to cash out on these and get into like some brand new units that may not cash flow quite as well, but won't cause many issues. Interesting. So, you found yeah. some great off-market deals. Yeah, I've crushed the off-market lately. Onward and upward. You know, the insurance is gonna cover it, or at least most of it, but this is not necessarily what we want to deal with. And they were using a property manager, but it just, it just threw them a loop and they just didn't wanna deal with that kind of stuff. So they decided to sell this property and a duplex that they owned and did you get the duplex change that money wow. into something that's a little bit newer a little bit nicer and probably won't have some of those kind of crazy off the wall issues like this one did now fortunately for me everything got replaced before i'm taking ownership and so i just get a brand new unit and this place looks awesome and hopefully we won't have any more problems but if we do we'll budget for them and is this a duplex that i've been in yet no, this is a fourplex. I know this is the duplex you're talking about. Have I seen uh, that? Yet? Remember the last one I posted on my Instagram, the one that I bought from e Eli owned it like a couple years oh, ago. Oh yeah, that's that, that duplex. H Street. Sweet. Yeah. You guys, let me know in the comments if you want to see a video of us uh, diving into that one. That's, sure a good, that's a good. one. So, um, I can. Uh, Chandler has me change locations. <laughs> it does have uh, space for a laundry room. So here's the other thing on this video. The videographer is new. Neither he nor I knew what we were doing. Last time I You've did these videos. You've done this a fair amount of times at uh, this point. Not by myself. People consider you an influencer. No, uh, I don't know. It's actually really <laughs> Still only at like 4,000 followers. I don't know. tall, but they're also not too short. It has a big closet that you could almost use as like a, I don't know, a kid's room or something like that. So it's a good unit. All new floor throughout because it flooded with poop water. All new cabinets, all new counters. What do you think this unit would rent for? Um, so I'm trying to see, it has a living room, this extended kitchen, another like living area, and then the only real bedroom is a closet in this N unit? No, no, there was a bedroom right before that closet. Did I just miss it? Probably. That's a closet. That's the bedroom. It's a oh, pretty, it's the a bedroom, bedroom with a closet. Bedroom, yeah. yeah, and the ah, closet's yeah. like big enough to be a small. That makes sense. I wasn't paying attention. It's actually really spacious. So in my guesstimates, with this market, this location, I would say that this one bedroom apartment, you could probably rent for seven fifty, eight hundred. dollars See, and I thought we could get like eight fifty to 900 just it is brand new brand finishes. New. Yeah, I don't think we'll get that forever, but I think we'll get it right now. But maybe yeah. I'm wrong. Okay. Really, a pretty clean unit. Um, so I'm excited. This is where I start uh, running out of content. Like, <laughs> it, it has um, three one bed, one bath units. So three one bed, one bath units. Yeah, I think. Is off market. <laughs> so you haven't been in them yet? Well, I walked through them all, but it was like a quick walk through. <laughs> and then one two bed, one bathroom. And so I, I think, think total, all <laughs> said and done, after we raise rents and things, we'll get about 3300 a month. Okay, so pause. 3300 a month. Oh, I fast forwarded. Be clean. So that's putting you 825 per unit. Yeah. They're all like. 
recently redone-ish. The thing, so they look about this quality. Not, I mean, this one's obviously the newest, but mm -hmm. none of them are like terrible. So 825 is where you need to land. I would need to know like the specs of the other units. Is, that, is there another unit just like this? No, this is the only like basement unit. There's one that's like an upstairs loft unit, and then there's two like main floor kind of bigger units. Okay, so those you think both those are two bedroom apartments? Let me see. Oh no, that's not it. The people were just moving in, and I know for a fact. I think we're getting nine hundred on this one. One bedroom. Well, there was a guy in another bedroom that was pissed that I had just come in, so I didn't go into the other one. So that but one for sure has bedroom. two bedrooms. Yeah, and it's pretty big. And that's upstairs. So odds are the two upstairs are two bedrooms. The other one I don't think was. I'm pretty sure the other one was a one bed. Yeah, that's, those are the only two videos I got. So three one bedrooms. And one two bedroom. And one two bedroom. And all of them are at least this big or bigger? No, this one, so here's, here's my thoughts. We'll get 900 for this one. The two bed that we just looked at, I think 900 or maybe even 950. Uh, then the two one beds that are a little bit smaller. One of them's the upstairs unit, one of them's the main floor unit, but it's just not huge. I think we'll get like 750, 800 for each of those. Cool, so your guesstimate is 3,300. Total. If I'm looking at this, the two bedroom, I think that you could probably get 900, seeing the quality of that. On the one bedrooms, um, I, for running numbers, I probably wouldn't stretch past 800. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. 800 times three, if those are all the same, plus your 900. So that puts you, look, we'll run it at 3,300 on these. I actually run the numbers here shortly. Let's do it. But we'll see how I do. Okay, we're gonna plug it into the calculator as you run some. Total, when all is said and done, after we raise rents and things, we'll get about 3,300 a month in rent on this place. So I'll go through the numbers here in a little bit, but it should be a good pickup. Um, and one of the things- and Then you instantly skip to a little bit. Is huh? how I acquired this property. Oh, you said you'd run numbers in a little so, bit. Oh, you're gonna talk about how you found it. Um, I was trying to figure out what to do here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I say a bit of an off day for me. I'm better at being the sidekick. <laughs> I know it about myself, I'm okay with it. <laughs> no, I love it. Two thousand years later. Okay, so or maybe I'll move spots again. Okay. Did you just move spots so, so you can figure out what you wanted to say next? Like, say well, you just always make me move spots while we're making yeah, videos. Yeah, great job. But there's not a lot of spots in this one, <laughs> and it was so cold outside. They just didn't want to deal with the messes, and they were okay giving up. Probably a little bit of. So I love, the thing with off-market deals that Garrett finds is he finds sellers that are very motivated to unload it. And the reality is for you, you're not quite as stringent to number criteria as I've been, but also the market is so aggressively exploding that you're definitely picking up properties for substantially less yeah. than what they're selling for in the market. And that's what makes a lot of Garrett's deals interesting is I've kind of stopped shopping in the one to four units where you're picking up a lot of off-market deals that might not meet my cash on cash return yeah. criteria, but also their huge value add. And really all the value add is, is you can either renovate, you can increase rents, or you can buy a property that you know is absolutely exploding in value. So that by the time you've purchased it, it's worth a lot more than what people would be, well, let me, it's worth a lot more than when you bought it because of what people are willing to pay. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I paid 400 for this and then they gave me five grand back in closing costs. So 395 essentially. I think if it listed, it would sell for 425, 430, like just because that's how the market is right now. People no. just can't get their hands on a multifamily, especially because this one would have been a really good one for someone to house hack in. So, yeah, kind of an interesting no, it's unit. Fantastic. I love how clean it is, how nice yeah, it is. Yeah, it's nice. I do think, like, long term, it's in a pretty decent location. So, cash flow that these units get better and just getting into a new unit. That That's what I'm talking about here. Really well, a new so, I just tell the story of how I met this property manager. I have a real estate license. So, two and a half years ago, he listed a duplex on the MLS 
And I called him. They had like 19 offers on this duplex. It was insane. And I just kind of wheedled my way in and was like, hey, look. Did like, you just say wheedled? Yes. I don't know that's a word. I believe it is. It's definitely a Pokemon. <laughs> uh, weaseled. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Weedle is a Pokemon. Though. Anywho, I weaseled my way in with him and made friends with him. Uh, basically told him like, hey, I own other units. If you guys will, you know, refer or highly encourage the seller to accept my offer because real estate agents have to, they have fiduciary duties so he can only do what's best for the seller. But I tried to position myself in such a way where my offer would be best for the seller. I was meeting all of their requirements, all of their demands, but it also, you know, was perceived by this listing agent as the offer that would be easiest for him and most beneficial for him because I, I would make his job easy. Um, and this is one area that Garrett crushes it, and that's why anytime I find anything MLS, unless someone brought it to me and they've gotten in, like Garrett is my go-to realtor. And it's because he's great at calling the selling agent and getting on their team, getting them to like him, get them, getting them to realize how much buying power and everything else I have. And so I'm always open, you guys know on the channel, I'm like, look, whoever brings me the deal, I'll buy it. But anything on the MLS, I'm going to Garrett because he is the freaking man at like coordinating as a realtor and getting me a great deal on a property. Thank you, that's really nice of you. Um, nice to hear some compliments, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, anywho, ended up closing on that property. And after closing on that property, I just kept in touch with him and I hit him up like once every couple weeks, uh, became Facebook friends with him. Uh, you know, I just say, Hey, how you doing? Um, and I'd always ask like, Hey, if you have any properties that, you know, cause, cause they manage like 800 units. So I'd say, if, if you have any owners that are looking to sell a property, like I, I will buy it or I have investors that'll buy it and we'll buy it at market value. Like we won't beat you guys up. I just wanna make sure that we get the units and then we'll let your group keep managing it. And so over the years, I think I've bought three other single family homes and sold uh, my brother-in-law one single family home. And then I've gotten a couple other like, well, obviously a duplex, fourplex. So it, I mean, it's turned into like 10 units that I think I've gotten all of them just a little bit under market value because they're not getting bid up on. And you get a commission. Yeah, and I make my commission on it as a realtor. Which makes a lot of these properties make sense as well. Yep. Ask, maybe I'll move again. Time to move again. <laughs> I don't know, I've heard of a small unit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do the Chandler thing. And this is something I haven't talked about either, but um, I might do more of these videos if you guys like them. So like the video and tell Chandler to have me do more of these. Or I might That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe. Look at that look of concentration. So I think he usually just has me like kind of show this and then he'll like pull up a video on the side of it. <laughs> 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 yeah. or I go closer on it? I honestly don't know. Whatever you think is good, I don't think it matters too much. It's very difficult. <laughs> okay, so I am buying this property for $400,000. $400,000 purchase price. They are $5,000 back at closing, and I negotiated that in the inspection period. So you can so put a negative number for $5,000 back. Um, now this is a I just factored the closing cost as 1% because I figured. Oh, uh, because uh, you just took it out. So yeah. closing costs at 1%. But then I did uh, give myself $8,000 back because of my commission. Oh, okay, so to give so it negative. back, negative 8,000. Yeah, which that's a good feature. That's an update. That it wasn't is. original. Check it out. It's cool. Check that out. Cool new feature on Chandler's app, the CDS. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do a negative cost to make rent ready. You really don't need to do anything to this place to make it rent ready because the current it's a owner. Turnkey, is baby. Turnkey. Because the toilet backed up. It's so my first year of making videos, I didn't know what turnkey meant. I'd hear people say it and I'd just try and talk around it. <laughs> Real estate has a lot of like acronyms. And it's hard to honestly, pick up on. There's still some where I'm like the PLT, what? Like, what is yeah. that? People are like, yeah, so do you like buying turnkey or like, what are you into? And I'm like, Totally depends on the situation. I'm open to anything. <laughs> you, like, you like rehab? You like buy and hold? You like uh, flips? I'm like, I don't know. We know now, obviously, but uh, don't feel intimidated if you're getting in and it seems like a lot. Yeah. People are only as smart as they think they are. dollars that I'll get paid. I said that saying wrong. So I'll put $8,000 in there. 
Uh, people aren't as smart as they think they are. Unfortunately, <laughs> high. People are smarter than they think they are. People are only as smart as they think they are. I like that. I was getting low. That's a, that's a like fair three, phrase four, too. Three and a half. And Listen to this. I got a four and a half interest rate. That sucks. Oh, that does suck. Rates have been going up. So you got boned on that. Well, one. yeah, and I honestly you got taken advantage of. Initially, when I ran the numbers, I thought it would be like a three and a half. So that oh. did, you know, these numbers aren't going to be perfect. <laughs> 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 Uh, so four and a half percent interest rate, thirty years to pay off, um, and it just do it. Four hundred total from all four units. Oh, I said thirty four hundred there. We're gonna run at thirty three. We're really, we're really hoping. In a year, it'll be there. Get about nine hundred from this unit. The other two units, they're a little bit low right now. We're currently getting like six fifty, but I think there's some room to bump those by fifty to seventy five dollars. So thirty four hundred, to be honest, is an estimate. It's a pretty good guess. At least I'm honest. Uh, maybe yeah. Factor in twelve percent because it is an older unit, and I pay eight percent to management. Eight percent, twelve percent maintenance, vacancy. Six, five. I think is what I was plugged at five. Okay. I mean they're already filled right now. And so my cash on cash return for this property is eight point six four percent. Pause for a minute. What'd you do? Insurance and taxes. Oh. It's forty five sixty on the year. And so, 45, 60, you just put them all in one box. Yeah, I just put them all in one because I was looking at my closing statement. Okay, run the numbers. The return for this property is 8.64%. Now Chandler says So pause for a minute. I must have put in this, the wrong down payment. Yeah, down payment, 25%. 25, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I plugged it in, it showed negative 30%, and I'm like, oh, we don't dang. want that. <laughs> we do not want that. All right, so I got a 7.68. What did you say you got? Well, I said something in the eights, because I said $100 more on rent, you know? Uh, that's true. I'm trying true. to make it look good for the YouTube channel. <laughs> 3,400. For all these people, though, I could have said 4,000. <laughs> <laughs> Run the numbers at 4,000. So, It'll look like a real one. <laughs> so, with what we're guesstimating, somewhere 8% plus. Yeah, 7, gosh, seven to 9. <laughs> okay. With time, it'll be more. Perfect. Uh, and then is that the end? In this kind of market, my humble opinion is that you have to be a little bit flexible. Oh, I say that you have to be flexible on the numbers. That is my opinion. So, I'm buying so let's pause. Let's talk about this. So guys, Garrett is somewhere between a seven and nine percent, depending on where the rents end on his cash on cash return with twenty five percent down. It's going to put his cash flow on this property somewhere probably between like seven and nine thousand dollars somewhere ballpark this is showing me eighty two hundred dollars in cash flow yeah. with your guesstimated rents um here are my thoughts on this and then we'll let you defend yourself i have a very strict stern like way of doing things and i've looked back on a lot of deals and i've regretted certain deals i've passed on because the market has been Explosive and I think both me and Garrett assume it's going to stay explosive to the point where Appreciation on property values has been like 20% So I have nickel and dimed certain deals where there are a couple thousand dollars off cash flow wise that Honestly with my current deal flow situation I've regretted not purchasing because now they would definitely meet my criteria had I bought them a year ago. Now, my reservations with doing it this way is I'm just the kind of person where if I hold to a stern criteria, it's very easy for me to look at a property and say buy or pass. And I feel like if I start bending, I'll bend more and more. But also we're in a market where Garrett did compared to what this should sell for. You bought it at $400,000. There are lots of people out there that right now in this market would probably pay four fifty, dollars maybe even four seventy five. dollars Yeah, it's a crazy maybe market. Maybe even more. Um, and if this market continues, it could be worth five hundred, five fifty, dollars if we have the kind of appreciation we've had. Inflation is on the rise. I've got money in the bank. You've got money in the bank. And so I totally understand why Garrett would buy a property like this. And I'm not even like talking down on it like, oh, I wouldn't have bought it and you would have. It is something because of the way that I've structured my criteria I wouldn't have. However, just coming clean, I just bought an eight unit at a 10% cash on cash return when I've always said my criteria was 12 because I felt like it was a freaking home run deal long term because of the massive need for housing in our market. And because appreciation has been so crazy, when you're looking at usually a three to 5% and with inflation and everything else, it's gone through the roof. 
I'm not going to say anything negative about this deal because I do think for Garrett, it's a home run. Like I think it's a great deal, a great structure, great setup. Now there are gonna be some of you that are watching the channel that are getting into your first deal and you want a 20% cash on cash return because you wanna stay st stern to it. There might be other people that are making, you know, a lot of money like Garrett is that want a place for it for the tax benefits, for the appreciation, for the cash flow. And you're looking on the MLS and saying, dude, there's nothing close to the kind of deal off market Garrett just found with all of these new finishes, a great setup, ready to roll, ready to manage property. And so when people say like, you must buy like this or die, Garrett has multiple deals he bought last year that I'm like, frick, I passed on deals that were similar to those deals that I would have won big on and that I'm regretting not purchasing. So that's where I stand on this. What are your thoughts? No, you pretty much summed it up. Uh, obviously I wish it was a 10 or 12% cash on cash. And if the interest rate would have been lower, it would have been substantially better. Interest rates affect your cash on cash more than people realize. Like a 1% bump on the interest rate is substantial. Um, so that, I mean, that hit me, but the rates are going up, so what do you do? Uh, I also was at 24 units prior to buying the duplex and the fourplex, and I really wanted to be at 30 units before turning 30. I turned 30 in October, and then these ones came up. It was almost meant to be. That definitely influenced my decision. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but it did. <laughs> the thing about it, whenever I look at these though, is Everyone has to figure out their criteria, their goals, what they want to do. And I honestly think that there isn't a right answer comparing the way I look at properties and you do because I have not had enough deal flow and I've sat on money and I've regretted not purchasing properties. All right, guys, we've come to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to remember to like, subscribe, uh, all that good stuff. And one thing that I think I've decided to do is we are going to do a series where we go back and look at all of me and Garrett's investment. And it's probably gonna take months to go through them, but I think it'll be really fun to see properties that maybe I criticized Garrett on before that are probably getting 15 to 20% cash on cash return now yeah. and have appreciated a ton in value. Same with mine. I think it's gonna be really fun to see. And I think you really do have to find a way to either increase your deal flow or increase your money to go into deals. Like you've got to figure out how much money you've got coming in, where you want to put those into deals. And I think this will be a fascinating look because the reality is you can't invest incorrectly in real estate if you're able to hold on to that real estate. Like every deal we've both bought even with evictions, you know, flooded toilets, a myriad of other things, they've all turned out to be incredible investments. And I think one of the reasons I love referring people to Garrett is he gets them started, he helps them understand it. And even though it's overwhelming to jump into it, a lot of times Garrett's the reason people do start a portfolio where the way that maybe I do things, they don't, they're hesitant because I do hold to a pretty stern criteria and a lot of times that costs you money if you can't create the deal flow. Um, so you guys let us know what you think about us going back, looking through all of our properties and seeing, because then Garrett's gonna rub it in my face on deals I could have bought that he bought that now I wish I would have bought. So with all that, anything to add? Maybe just get them to uh, push the like, subscribe. You already said that. I know, but I want you to say it. Oh. <laughs> Go on ahead and uh, follow my Instagram. <laughs> and uh, The other uh, thing is, Garrett's always okay with me doing this. It's good content. Everyone thinks I pick on Garrett. He's my best buddy. He knows Chandler this stuff. Look at the stature of this. <laughs> you can't really pick on me. Oh, that's true, that's fair. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and we'll look forward to seeing you in the future. Future videos. Go on ahead and like it. <laughs> yeah. Give you one.